Hi there, my name is Martin and I work for DDU this semester for this seminar to just help you with Rhino and Grasshopper. And your Rhino should look like this. If it's in German, just click on File Properties and just go on Appearance in here and change it to English. So it will be the German words for that, but just use English as language because most of the tools are even in English and otherwise you just mix it up a lot. So I show you around a bit in this tutorial, just this really basics how Rhino works. Um, in the next tutorials I show you some modules, how you can um, just start getting some work done. And what you can see here you have four um views which is like the perspective front top and right and what you can see if you click on your um on your mouse on your right you're able to just move move it around and if you use shift also you're just also to, able to change your view so now we gonna build the first box just click on box on that point you have to be on standard on the top otherwise it could be that you have a different uh, menu there so you just click the first point click the second and click the third for the set axis and now we're gonna go on shaded and shaded is a different view which allows you to see the box better um, but you can't see through it so you have different view views in there and it only changes for the one year in there so you can just can check them so they're like x-ray till pen there's all different views it makes more or less sense either way like just check it um just keep in mind if you use rendered and you have a big pieces or a lot of pieces it just takes time because it tries to render it like straight away So you can double click on, for example, perspective and you get just one view right now. And you could also change it in the bottom where top, front and right. But now you can go back to a um, free viewport layout and go back to four ports view. Um, it often makes sense to actually just have one. So now that's a really big thing. You have the command line. And you have the history of the commands of Rhino, so you can see what you actually made. And you're able to just type commands in the command line in here, as we will do now. So uh, I misspelled it here. So we type in box, click on enter, and it starts up with a three point, po a three point box. And we just built a second box on top of the box. So, as you can see, there are different ways in Rhino to get to what you want to do. You have different like folders in here with tools. So it, I hope it does look like Rhino Five in the beginning. I uh, brought it back to pretty basic. So, just keep in mind that it's could change on the left menu as you change the top one and if you install like a, a certain plugin or whatever it will appear mostly up here now we we're gonna save the file just um, as in every other program pretty much so just go on save um, I already have a file because I messed up the recording before so just use the Rhino 5 3D there are different uh, tons of different um, files you can use or, or file types if you have to export it somewhere for example your 3D printer um, it's really good and handy to do that but we just go with Rhino 5 3D models it's a 3DM file and just go on speichern which it's quite funny that it's in 
German and not English. So now you even see in the top successfully saved. Um, so now I'm showing you the gumball, which is um, this three. Yeah, it's this. It's always like in the middle of your object, and you're able to just move it around if you use the arrows. Um, you, it's not that precise if you just move it, but you can double click on it and type values in it. Um, you can stretch it and do a lot of different things. I mean, if it's really important that you have Gumball turned on there. If you turn it off, you can't use it. Um, but uh, it depends how you work. It's really important that you turn it on or turn it off. Now this O snap also it helps you just to snap next to like positions you want to go. Um, and now I'm just gonna show you grid snap. It's if grid snap is on, it allows you only to put points on exa exactly grids, so it's pretty accurate. Uh, I turned the O-snap on now, so it helps me just to um, find the endpoint of the box. If I turn it off, I don't find it anymore. So if I can also in O-snap, I can let O-snap know to I want to find those points. So it just helps me to do my workflow. And now we got turned on auto as well, which allows me to put lines into one direction only. As you can see now, it does it to the next of O-Snap, so O-Snap is higher than Orto. So, um, now I have Orto turned off and you can see the line could go anywhere. 